All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Chris Longo, the Head of Sales and Marketing for AOPEN. Uh, I wanna thank you for joining us today on the future of drive-throughs. We'll be taking a deep dive into the, the major shift that's been happening in uh, the dining experiences of QSRs. So today we're gonna have one of our expert partners in the space. Uh, it's the Howard Comp from the Howard Company, uh, who's been developing customized branding solutions since 1950, along with AOPEN's uh, head technology solutions engineer, Miles Schofield. So just real quick on a quick note, if you have any questions during the presentation whatsoever, please feel free to send those via the chat function or the Q&A to all panelists. And we will have a Q&A session at the end of this presentation to answer any of the questions. Um, we're also gonna have an on-demand recording as well as a copy of the slide deck that'll go out in the next few days, um, as soon as it's available. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, turn the presentation over to Miles Schofield. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another AOPEN webinar. Um, as Chris uh, mentioned today, we're talking about the future of drive-throughs. Um, you know, this is, uh, a, a a topic that uh, has come up a lot as many change, uh, many businesses, you know, were forced to make serious changes in 2020. Um, so we've been talking about it uh, through all types of different verticals in the past, education, uh, retail, wayfinding, corporate communication, blah, blah, blah. And so today we're talking about um, specifically drive-throughs and uh, how they change, how they're gonna change in, in the future. Are they gonna disappear completely? How are they gonna interact with DoorDash? All that good stuff. And I'm really thrilled to have uh, VP Sales and Marketing, Gary Kurtz here from the Howard Company. Uh, as Chris mentioned, they've been around here forever. Everyone knows them. Uh, they, they develop end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, they do it all, they know it all. So uh, they're gonna have a lot of great information about all the business that they did last year and all the, the continuing business that they're gonna do this year with those, those top QSRs um, and fast, fast casuals. So, um, what we're looking at today uh, is, uh, of course, Gary's gonna give you an introduction to the Howard Company and their solutions and really focus on how uh, the conversation in terms of what solutions that they were delivering uh, changed from 2019, 2020, and of course, uh, what they're planning to do this year and next year as well. Uh, so he's gonna do a, a, a run through of all that. I'm gonna talk about uh, generally the types of solutions AOPEN provides for these uh, for drive through specifically, uh, you know, in the past, uh, you've seen that we do a lot of uh, outdoor kiosks, you know, charging kiosks, outdoor menu boards, all that sort of stuff. So just a quick overview of that. And then my opinion of like key overarching technologies that I think are going to really have uh, an effect on drive throughs in the future, probably much longer term than Gary is going to be talking about. Um, but I'm going to be looking at things that uh, we've seen at some top businesses, but I think can be applied to drive throughs as well. So to kick, a, kick us off, thanks for being here. So why don't you get us started, Gary? Perfect. All right, can you guys, am I good, Miles, there? You are good to go. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, thanks again for having us, our friends at AOPEN. Uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, some of the things that we do, some of the, the things that we see in the drive through area, and uh, some of the things that we see other companies doing. Uh, our first picture here is, is kind of uh, representative of the amount of, of, of area that the drive throughs are taking up. Uh, this, this is a Smoothie King building. That building is probably, you know, 12 to 1400 square feet. Uh, and the, the drive through takes up uh, more than double of that. So that's going to be something that you're going to see uh, happening more and more. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit more later. Uh, as Miles said, uh, my name is Gary Kurtz. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing with the Howard Company. I've been with the company just over seven years now. Uh, it feels, feels a lot longer in the restaurant industry. Uh, but so I, I, I see this kind of stuff every day. Uh, we are, we're very in tune to what a lot of the brands out there are doing. I'm hoping to, to spread some of that message to help somebody, so to help everybody learn. Uh, the Howard Company, uh, as Chris said, we've been in business for 70 years. Uh, we, we exist to connect our customers to their customers. Uh, we're a branding, and branding signage and technology company. 
uh, since 1950, so 70 years. So over the course of that time, we've seen a lot. We started in POP. Uh, our company actually uh, provided the first backlit menu board. Uh, I believe it was for a Hardee's location. Uh, and, and now we're to the point where we're doing digital drive-throughs. Uh, we're agnostic as far as technology goes, but uh, every piece of technology and, and branding signage that goes into a drive-through is something that we do. A couple of examples for you. Uh, this is a double drive-through that we did. Uh, we, we did this entire thing here, the, uh, the hardware, the software, the design, um, and the installation. Uh, so we did everything, including the communication system, which was actually uh, something that was fairly difficult for, for a location like this in, a, in that cement, because it was like 200 feet away from the building. Uh, but this is, this is a fairly modern, modern looking drive-through uh, in comparison to a lot that are out there. Uh, two, three screen digital uh, double drive-throughs. Uh, we also uh, create a product that's uh, static or digital. Uh, this this picture is an example of a human being location in Colorado where uh, we sent our crew and our, our marketing director out uh, to change the static screens to digital. And that was able to be done within two hours. Uh, so if, you know, at the end of a project, if the budget is a little bit low, uh, we can put in static panels uh, that are, you know, backlit translate, translate graphics. And, you know, when the business is proven out, uh, we can change them up to digital or you know whatever whatever drives that portion uh, as long as everything's set up uh, in ahead of time it's a it's a great way to to be able to change the experience for your customers uh, you know the the benefits of digital signage is probably another uh, webinar but uh, just the ease of ease of changing technology uh, is is going to be very important uh, you know from the time that you start a restaurant now until you know you're going to have that building for 30 years so you want to be able to update and manage your technology as you go uh, freddy's this is a, a a very good example for us of of, of owning the entire drive-through so from the entrance of a freddy's uh, to the pre-sale board to where you order um, and that actually the middle panel on that on that menu board uh, that we're doing for them now is also a order confirmation, uh, so that's built in. Uh, it used to be that order confirmations were either on a separate kiosk or a pole, uh, as you guys see in a lot of McDonald's nowadays, uh, or actually every one of them that has a digital screen, uh, the order confirmation takes up about half of the monitor uh, and then it goes away. So you get the chance to use it as a, a marketing piece uh, when somebody's not there and then when somebody starts ordering, they can verify their order right on right on the monitor. Uh, and that's something that we've picked up and we're doing for several POSs now. I believe we're up to eight or nine. Uh, that's also another piece of, of the drive-through of the future. As you don't want a standalone unit, you just want to be able to use that marketing real estate when it's not being used uh, by someone else. Uh, another example of uh, interior and exterior digital system that we've, that we've done. Um, in most of these cases, uh, where the Howard Company is doing the, the initial design, uh, you know, shipping, manufacturing the product, and doing the installation, and then also the the, the upkeep. Uh, so as you guys go, as our customers go, and they need to change things, uh, we work with them uh, to you know roll out different graphic schedules over the course of the year. A couple other things that we provide. I won't read through everything, but um, the, the point of this is that we, we take care of everything. So from, you know, you have an idea in your head of how things are going to look to the point where it's getting installed and then, and then taking care of it after this, after our sales service. So, um, all right, future drive through So if you're following the periodicals in QSR magazine and the NRN national restaurant news, uh, you'll see things like this, uh, you know, multiple lanes designated for specific channels, uh, future restaurants. Uh, we've, if we learned anything in 2020, it's that we're going to have curbside is going to be here to stay. Uh, interior dining is maybe a little bit less and then a big focus on drive through So how do you get cars and customers through your business 
without backing it up so that when people are driving by, they can actually come in. They don't feel that, that they're going to be waiting forever. Uh, this is just one example of, of what Burger King actually put out. You know, and you see that there are six lanes here that the customers can use and then several that you can pull up to uh, if you're not comfortable with going inside. Uh, this is a, what we see as more so a permanent change. There was always customer or restaurant chains that, you know, they did curbside. Applebee's have been doing it forever, uh, but it, it really just kind of took home uh, during, during 2020. Uh, and this also allows delivery services as we we also feel that maybe delivery, you know, it may go up and down as versus popularity, but it's probably here to stay. So restaurant restaurant brands are needing to make sure that they can get those people in and out efficiently without, you know, rocking the boat with their the customers that are showing up just on a whim or the ones that are scheduled to be there. Uh, also, the restaurant of the future, much smaller footprint. Uh, the ability to, to do walk-up service, uh, a little bit harder if you're in Wisconsin where, where we're located. Uh, but we across the board, we see a, a lot of people at least testing out smaller buildings uh, with, with more accessibility to, to drive up and drive throughs. There you see a checkers and in the upright, you just you can just see that there's there's more branding that's being done on the outside of the buildings to be able to tell that restaurant brand story. Uh, attractive, well-lit exterior. Uh, this is a kind of a great example of, of utilizing uh, your exterior signage and really telling your, your, your branding story on the outside of your drive-through. So uh, this example is a, you know, a Del Taco restaurant of the future, but they're utilizing the same colors uh, in, the, in the same way and it's a well-lit uh, you know, you can tell that it's a, you can really see this from far away. So you don't have any kind of a issue of seeing where you should go to enter the drive through. Uh, that's a, you know, a customer experience piece that, you know, it's just the ease of use. Uh, and then everything is vis very visually pl pleasing and, and very bright. Uh, that's, you know, the, the nighttime look, because this restaurants, you know, you've got to be busy whenever you're open now. So you got you to gotta have your day appeal and you have to have your night appeal. Uh, integrated omni-channel strategy. Again, it kind of goes back to, you know, where, you, where do the customers go? If, if you're a DoorDash driver, where do you need to go? If you're an online order, where do you go? Uh, we've, the restaurant of the future has to set these things up for you. Uh, and we have to be able to, to move those cars through. I know in, in our our original talks, Miles really likes the uh, the Sonic setup, uh, but you know how do you do that and keep the cars moving through if if they're not allowed to sit and eat in their cars? Uh, just a couple of other uh, restaurant brands that are are really kind of looking at their future plans: uh, Captain D's, Burger King, Shake Shack. Uh, uh, Del Taco, El Pollo Loco. Uh, these are people that you see in, in different parts of the country. Uh, but they're also kind of putting out their ideas of what their future restaurants are going to look like. Uh, so with this many uh, companies that are in on this, uh, we know that there's so that there's going to be some things that happen. And those customers are going to get used to, to having a really good experience, not only with technology, but with branding. So any uh, resistance to that uh, may be an issue as, as they grow these brands. Uh, with forward-looking designs, brands are saying uh, our brand needs to reflect our brand. Our drive-through needs to be inviting, clean, and modern. Our drive-through technology needs to influence consumer behavior. Uh, all, all very important things that we're going to need to see uh, in in the restaurant of the future. All the things that the Howard Company does when they when they're working with customers from the start. Our drive-through needs to utilize technology that facilitates a seamless experience for our customers. It's really what it's about, you know. As we as we work on branding and technology and marketing packages with people, uh, it's really uh, how do we get the customer to be, to want to come to there again? How do we get the repeat business? How do we get the the them to go from showing up once a month to coming twice a week? Uh, you know, the, the better off their experience is going to be and the better use of that technology that we have, the, 
the more that customer is going to come there and be willing to spend their money. Our drive-through technology needs to be connected to other tools. Uh, as part of what I said before, the Howard Company is agnostic to technology. So if, if a restaurant client wants to use a certain type of monitor or their, you know, their drive-through timer or an aura confirmation, uh, you know, license plate recognition might be a thing in the future. Uh, we work with everybody. So we're not going to tell you that you have to have, you're not into just us. We want to partner with people to bring in the technology stack that will get you to the point where you can succeed. Uh, where we came from, uh, the picture of a of a old Jack in the Box that that kind of looks kind of kind of creepy a little bit, but uh, where we just showed you some pictures of the newest drive-throughs that are going to be coming up. This is where we came from. So, what's different this year? It's about the external experience. We've been telling people for years that you know before anything with with the virus or anything that. You need to put the amount of time that you put into the interior of your restaurant into the exterior, and people are now seeing that. So it, it used to be, you know, if you were to, to spend a certain amount of dollars on the inside, which was only 30% of your business or 40%, uh, but, you know, the exterior, which was a little bit more expensive, but took care of 70% of your business, uh, we're seeing that our customers are putting in their time into that experience because they have to tell the story outside of the restaurant. People don't get to see people working in the back and, and making food. Uh, so the, the first time that they're gonna see your brand is when they open that package. Uh, but really it starts when they come into that parking lot. What are they seeing and, and what kind of experience are they having? Uh, the drive-through is no longer a passive selling tool. Uh, you know, people do things on a whim, especially when you're in the, the beverage area. So. Uh, if it's an inviting area that's well lit, uh, that that doesn't look like it's overloaded, you, you're going to get more guests to come through. Uh, and then we have to use the technology that we can to, to, as a business to boost our check averages and get people through quickly. Uh, the Amazon effect. Uh, we talk about this in a lot of different ways on a weekly basis. So uh, Amazon, you get... Every two, you know, you order something, you get it in two days. Uh, we have to be fast. <laughs> uh, it, it's not as, it's, it's very difficult, um, but that's just the expectation. People want it and they want it, they want it now. They don't want to have to wait for it uh, and, and lives are busy. So we have to uh, know what they want. Uh, we, we want the technology to remember us. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have a, a menu board in their pocket over the course of time. Uh, and the, the more that we can put that experience into what, what their expectations are, our customers' expectations, the more they're going to come back. And that's, again, what it's really all about. Uh, the authentic human interaction still matters. Uh, you know, the, making their purchasing easier, uh, but the successful brands like the, the Chick-fil-A's, they still have a a human interaction that really makes a difference for the customer experience. Uh, it's nothing, I mean, the technology is used by the people, uh, but you still have to have that human interaction. Uh, all right, uh, so that's the Howard Company, a little bit about the restaurant of the future. Uh, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and I'll let uh, Miles take over his section. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Thanks again. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of good stuff there. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about it more in the questions uh, and comments section, uh, section later. So um, what I really wanted to focus on, uh, I'm gonna be focusing on a lot of things that Gary just said, but first uh, I wanted to talk generically about uh, the types of solutions uh, that AOPEN tries to uh, focus on in this particular vertical. And this is one of AOPEN's best verticals, right? Um, the generic single screen player market is, is incredibly crowded. And, but when you have these sort of outdoor signage or um, indoor restaurant menu board uh, solutions, you need a device because 
they're, they're all effectively business critical components. So uh, the trickiest thing when you're dealing with harsh environments, especially outdoor kiosks, you've seen from our webinars in the past that we've partnered with outdoor wayfinding solutions and outdoor charging kiosk solutions. So it just goes hand in hand uh, with partners that do um, these type of uh, outdoor drive through uh, either payment terminals or uh, uh, menu boards, outdoor drive through menu boards and stuff like that. So the two primary challenges that when you're trying to select technology uh, solutions for these areas, are of course, temperature and maintenance, right? If you have a metal box that's parked outside in Texas during the summer, uh, then you're going to face some challenges, right? So the two primary little uh, uh, borders you're dealing with is 116 uh, is basically how hard a, how a, a car gets after an hour in the sun. Obviously, a kiosk is going to be out all day, but they have advanced um, it all depends on what type of kiosk you're using on, on that upper limit. But the, the tricky thing with computers is actually the lower limit uh, a lot of the times. Minnesota, Wisconsin, where gays from, definitely gonna get below zero. And uh, that, that's a different type of challenge, right? And so, and of course maintenance, when you're dealing with menu boards, unacceptable that they're down. So you, you, what, obviously that's one of AOPEN's primary brand messages is that our devices, you know, we don't fail. Um, which allows you to have confidence in using them for your business uh, applications. So let's talk about quickly how we address the temperature one. So uh, if you've seen any open devices before, we offer three form factors, uh, you know, our mini ITX, fanless and fanless extended. And you can see, first thing that should pop out to you is that if you use a gener generic fanless device, it has a, a, a lower uh, uh, maximum temperature. You can see it's 45, 45 versus 50. And so the, the fans do give you a little bit extra margin, but uh, in terms of thermal uh, properties, you know, uh, uh, but the, the downside is that they require maintenance, right? So there's that little bit of traction. Uh, in general, the way that AOPEN sees it for drive-through and outdoor signage kiosks, it's all about zero maintenance, right? You, the, it, kiosks are expensive to run out there. You don't want a guy running out in the middle of your drive through fixing the sign during the day when you're supposed to be making money. And, and that typically tends to be our most popular products um, for these type of situation where the box is very, very difficult to get to. Uh, and uh, the new type of product that you've heard about in other webinars in terms of outdoor kiosks is this bottom one is that we have fanless extended temperature range. And you can see the really important metric right there, minus 20 to 60. So in Fahrenheit, American terms, minus four uh, to 140. And uh, that really allows it to just, you just put it in a kiosk. You, you don't need that much temperature control as long as it's protected from the water, it's, uh, um, it's, it's gonna be fine. And, and that's, that's what you, is used in a lot of these type of scenarios uh, with our partners. So the other thing on how AOPEN solutions support these type of uh, um, outdoor menu boards and outdoor kiosks, of course, on our fan devices, we have a replaceable filter. Um, to try and mitigate uh, the, um, the debris-based failures, right, where junk builds up inside and it fails, usually due to thermal load. Uh, and of course, like I said, our main products here in this, these verticals is the zero maintenance thing. It just makes the most sense um, because you want the most reliable device uh, possible. Uh, and in general, uh, our devices, even our, our window full, uh, full system devices have sub 2% failure rate, uh, which is obviously something that enterprise com uh, companies demand. So uh, the one thing that Gary and I were talking about before uh, this webinar started is of course, that sort of different types of strategy. Every customer is gonna take a different strategy and, uh, and the primary strategy um, in doing drive-throughs is whether or not you actually put the media player in the outdoor kiosk effectively, or you put it in the building and you run like 300 feet of HDMI out there. So there's lots of uh, different types of solutions and they all have cost basis and things like that, which is uh, really interesting. So that's pretty much how AOPEN um, approaches this, in, uh, this uh, vertical from our product uh, standpoint. So let's get into a uh, little bit about what Gary was talking about in terms of um, the changes that he saw and that we, we've all been looking at in the last few years in, uh, in QSR. So um, the main one is of course that no one could go in, right? This was the real jarring wake up call, uh, you know, that, uh, that these, these customers went for. And, and normally when I talk about the Amazon effect during the webinars, it's, it's because Amazon is crushing retailers and it's retailers trying to catch up. But uh, when I was talking to Gary earlier this week, uh, his point was that 2020 could was actually probably good for QSRs because 
you know, there's no Amazon for QSR yet, right? Um, so this 2020, in terms of forcing everyone to get online, make their drive through better, was probably a, a, a really good thing because it forced them to upgrade, really gave them a, a good reason because, uh, to upgrade all these systems, explore these new solutions, right? And that's exactly what that first line is about. It, it, these type of online presence, all this stuff, nice to have to must have, right? Or ordering doubled, 20% to 40%. Um, and, uh, uh, and you can see this bonkers number at the bottom, 38% uh, of fa franchisees added drive through care, ca uh, capability. So just a massive amount of business happened last year and it's gonna happen uh, this year, the year after, uh, just as Gary was saying, investing in these new types of technology. Some of those big brands are going for full buildings. Some of them are just adding lanes. Uh, and uh, so there's just a, a ton of action that's gonna be um, happening. So the most interesting thing about, uh, as Gary mentioned, the different channels that each one of these brands. So when we talk about channels, we're talking about what is your margin rate when people come inside versus walk by versus drive through versus pickup versus DoorDash versus whatever. Um, and so, you know, he br briefly brought up, you know, that you need sort of like all these frictionless payment systems and omni-channel uh, ideas and things like that. Uh, but the bottom line is that even before uh, uh, 2020, the drive through was just dominating things, right? Americans love to buy QSR from their car. And, you know, the, the numbers I remember in the past were usually around 60, 50%. And, but obviously during 2020, there was this massive push and, you know, the New York Times reported 70%, which is just like, why isn't this the, the if it, you're doing 70% of your business through one channel effectively, why is it not ridiculously ritzy, right? Like uh, it makes you think why, why would Burger King even deal with it, an indoor sit down if all their, uh, uh, all their business was going uh, through the drive-thru, right? Uh, and then the, the reality of 2020 is uh, this next line, it was a revenue center, but not a profit center. So why are you spending and using all that land space uh, to have all this sit down stuff when you're, you're not making any margin, you're making revenue, but you're, you're not making any profit. So uh, the interesting thing uh, here to talk about in my mind is the sort of why people did sit down in the first place and where it's beneficial and where it's not beneficial. Uh, so it gets into like a, a little bit of the specifics, but the way I think about it is of course, traffic, average ticket value, which Gary, uh, which Gary brought up, which is a very important thing that everyone in the restaurant business considers. Of course, what type of product you're selling? Uh, real interesting metrics is that a lot of these different food types, like people will overwhelmingly use drive through for burgers, but for chicken and, and uh, QSR Mexican, it's like way less, which is, which is really confusing. I mean, you can look at that data and say, is it just the food type or do those restaurants generally have worse drive throughs or, or do they, is their online ordering better? So people just don't, really don't wanna deal with it, um, things like that. And of course, the number one challenge between di uh, dine-in and drive through is menu optimization. Uh, typically, one of the ideas with driving people indoors is that they have time to literally see your 90 menu boards inside and stand around and forever and, and uh, you have plenty of upsell opportunities. So they're going to end up ordering more, buying more and having more ticket prices, right? And then the drive through, you have like literally two seconds to read the board. You got people honking behind you. So you have to have a limited menu. So it's it, traditionally that thinking was always that it was a trade-off. Um, so overall, um, in, in summary, in terms of this issue, di dine in was always viewed as sort of like, well, if you have X amount, say you're like a, a, a highway-based QSR, right? You, you get X amount of traffic, no way, no amount of advertising is gonna get you any more business. Only amount, X amount of people are coming down that road no matter what. So you wanna offer a higher quality experience to drive increased ticket prices, right? That was the whole thinking. But now that people are so drive-through centric, that's not necessarily the case depending on the business. So really, really interesting things in, uh, in terms of, you know, do restaurants even need a sit down section whatsoever, right? So uh, just to go over it, uh, uh, encapsulate my views on the typical drive-through uh, is, you know, ordering, you get one, maybe two lanes. Uh, to me, it's, it, it seems a little bit uh, uh, hectic right, compared to the indoor ordering experience, which I think is, is one of those key factors I talked about. Um, payment pickup, bottlenecked, right, 
uh, you know, everyone, if you're paying on cash and counting out those pennies, the guy in front of you is counting out nickels and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's holding up the line, right? That's, that's unacceptable in modern America, holding up the line. <laughs> and, uh, and then the last thing that Gary brought up was, was space. I mean, the kitchen of this footprint probably makes up about 10% of this, this total footprint. So theoretically, you could literally have a building uh, that just, just a tiny little box and the rest can be all those other channels. It can be that curbside pickup, it can be that stall-based ordering, it can be drive-through pickup, it can be drive-through ordering, just like you see. So it's all about how you can design that new, uh, that new footprint to sort of minimize the dining area. Um, and maximize those other channels, which are becoming much so much more popular. Uh, last thing I wanted to, uh, th this image was stolen from a, a franchise um, a, a layout sort of uh, standard manual. And the really interesting thing I thought about here was that uh, this box A was in, in, in the manual is highlighting that you wanna add a lot of foliage to dress up your drive-through, make it look better. So you can see that the idea behind this manual is that you want to pack a whole bunch of trees around your drive-through so that it feels uh, uh, more <laughs> more dressed up, I guess. <laughs> so I thought that was a really interesting aspect of this guide. Um, so let's talk about how to solve a lot, some of these problems in my mind. So one of the ones that a lot of businesses have been doing, so uh, Walmart, Target has done this, is where you know you you set an order for pickup and the app tracks you the whole way, right? If you're more than a, a, a mile away, location-based services, it uses your cell phone network. And then a lot of these can now identify with your app and have you talk to local Bluetooth devices and they can actually track you within 10 feet. This is essential for anything done in a city because as we know, uh, location-based services uh, around buildings is absolutely, absolutely terrible. So this type of Bluetooth, um, like localized tracking within 10 feet uh, is, is really gonna help uh, increase that customer experience in terms of uh, directly addressing people and things like that. Uh, do I think it's always gonna be Bluetooth? Probably not. I think some business is gonna come up with a better localized protocol, probably a payment proto protocol that works within uh, 10 feet as well. Um, but I think uh, we have a number of, AOPEN has a number of partners that are working on this type of technology because it just makes the most sense for pickup, right? And you want the order exactly when the person arrives. They want to show up for literally a second and pick it up. They don't want to wait in line to order. They don't want to do X, Y, and Z. They don't want to go inside. So this is uh, the most obvious thing that brands are doing in my mind, to, uh, to, to reduce um, that interaction time. Um, let's see, optimizing payments. Obviously, currently payments are completely bottlenecked, right? Uh, through that usually typically one, uh, one window. But we already learned from toll roads that, and plenty of other businesses is that uh, customers need to be sorted based off of uh, what type of payment speed they're doing, right? Um, you know, if you're, you know, why, uh, why don't you have a DoorDash lane effectively, right? It, it, the, one of the things Gary and I talked about was that if you, um, if you constantly do cur curbside pickup, it's great, but then how many sp spaces are you actually using? And then, but if, if you do curbside pickup and then you have them park, it, you, you put the ones further away because you wanna give the people coming in the store closer parking. So you put the curbside pickup on the other side, but then you have to have everyone walk through traffic. I mean, it's sort of a mess. So that's why all these brands are reconsidering massive redesigns to the footprint because you have to think about it in terms of, well, people wanna park closer. So why don't we have the curbside pickup further away? But it, you know, why don't we just have a curbside pickup drive-through and things like that? So that's what would obviously would make the, 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 the most sense. In terms of uh, payment optimization, yeah, uh, same, same thing. You need to be able to pay online. Um, you know, it's all gonna be app centric or PWA centric uh, uh, in terms of these companies accepting more and more payment types just to make things more and more fr frictionless, right? Uh, I'm sure you all get annoyed already when you're in the grocery store and someone pays with pennies in front of you, right? And doesn't, you know, you're in the Starbucks and someone starts counting in front of you and you're like, can't you just use your phone and scan it in two seconds? That's where everyone's going in QSR, um, obviously, right? The, the, they already, uh, this is an airport terminal and they're already starting to do that. Uh, but QSRs are gonna follow suit uh, in that regards. So in terms of uh, optimizing order speed, you know, what the, the challenge is, is, you know, if you have that traditional two lane to one lane drive-through, 
uh, you know, the guy pulls up, he's probably got cars behind him. It's, it's tension. He's got, you know, the three menu boards set up um, from the Howard company. You know, how do you optimize the use of that space, right? And if you're using the classic Starbucks uh, eye chart menu, it's not gonna happen, right? Because we all know that when you have a limited amount of time, you wanna see what you're getting, right? Uh, you don't want the eye chart. Um, so that's why so many drive through menu boards have just pictures of the food and try and jam in as many possible, right? So yeah, that, that's the challenge. So what can you do to accessorize that and solve that uh, menu order speed? So. Uh, as Gary mentioned, the one I like is um, is the sort of stall base. So you can see this is a regular Sonic solution. It's stall based. You, everyone parks against the building. Uh, the people coming out don't have to work, walk through traffic. Uh, you can even have a drive through for for pickups uh, on the other side if you want. So, uh, but you can see that the downside is that you have to buy uh, a menu for every stall, right? Uh, so it's a much more it's a bigger financial uh, investment. Um, but it, it creates a much lower press, pressure uh, and better experience in, in general. Um, yeah, another aspect of the design, which I thought was interesting that Gary brought up was of course the, uh, 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 yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole safety aspect and, and the fact that you really need, if you're gonna change your building footprint and all these things, you, you have to, you always have to consider that even if you have a stall based design, people are gonna be pulling out uh, and jamming fries in their mouth and on their cell phones with their kids or something at the same time, right? And so you have to take all these things uh, uh, into consideration when you're designing these new, uh, these new layouts. Uh, the other thing that uh, I think is further down the road is, uh, well, if you only have a small menu board in a stall or in a drive through you got other screens around you. And it's really going to be in, in terms about loyalty programs. We've talked about that a lot of past. Lots of brands do it well. Lots of brands do it not so well. But in terms of uh, loyalty, uh, you know, if you're going to be using the app for tracking and payment, they're going to use it to advertise uh, to you. That's the bottom line. So uh, a lot of these systems, you're going to get the menu board not only on the outside your car or on the drive-through, but you're going to get it on your phone. And I think. It, that eventually you're going to have it on your car's computer, right? Uh, your car's computer is going to be able to go in. Uh, it's not anytime soon, uh, I don't think. Uh, but that whole idea is that you're utilizing screens that people are used to using, right? The screen in their car, the screen on their cell phone, in addition to the screen that you, you put next to their drive through stall or uh, their drive through lane. So I, I think that's the main uh, type of technologies that are eventually going to uh, be integrated there. All right, so what could uh, disrupt the drive-through industry? Uh, I put this uh, uh, um, <clears throat> put this slide in here just to, to give you guys, it, it, was a, it was a big talking point. A lot of people were talking about this last year. Um, and in terms of uh, where, the, where the QSR business is going, right? Uh, and the whole idea is, you know, we're gonna say, we're, we're saying that QSRs are gonna make their drive-throughs really nice and, and beautiful and best in all this technology to speed up pickup time and ordering time and all this stuff, great. However, is there gonna be a meaningful amount of um, these type of QSRs that are gonna realize that not having a footprint is the most valuable thing? And that's what a ghost kitchen is, right? So a ghost kitchen, basically you can have a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Starbucks, all in the same generic building and then, uh, and then they just cater to DoorDash, right? So you don't need a location, you just need a place where people can pick up orders. And it's an interesting idea that could sort of become the Amazon. But the way I think about it is that these companies, uh, these type of uh, uh, solutions could effectively become the Amazon of uh, QSRs, right? Is that you have a building that you can't go through, but just dominates the industry by trying to drive down the price of DoorDash, right? Because why? If, if DoorDash ever becomes the exact same price as a drive-through, then it, it can't compete. Same way with Amazon, right? Free shipping versus not free shipping, right? So yeah, do I think it's gonna happen? I think in certain instances, ghost kitchens uh, provide a, a, a lot more value based off of real estate costs and things like that. But I don't see uh, this shift happening until you have a major uh, change in, in the franchise landscape, uh, which could, could happen due to a lot of factors, right? Uh, like we know that a lot of fa uh, franchise businesses may change due to the fact that uh, the whole where people want to live is shifting now that they can work from home, 
things like that. A lot when a lot more driving gets automated, that's going to shift the value of property and QSRs as well, right? So um, yeah, that's sort of ghost kitchens are sort of they they already exist, but they're sort of a long term idea on how it may affect this industry. All right, let's wrap things up. How do we do for time? Forty, not too bad. Uh, here we go. And so uh, of course we have Howard Company here. Um, leader in modern drive-through solutions. Uh, they've been doing a ton of it last year. This year, uh, as you heard them say, they do it all. They do the design top to bottom, uh, you know, customer interaction, a menu design, uh, all the hardware design, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for QSR fast casual brands. Um, and uh, number two, of course, 2020, the major thing that it did was really push those QSRs to increase their online presence, their online ordering presence, forced them to work with DoorDash more, most likely and figure out all that stuff. Uh, a lot of them added drive-throughs as we mentioned. Um, so yeah, tw 2020 was, you know, was pretty much a good thing for QSRs because uh, it really made them up their service uh, and, and address all of these little, uh, these things um, uh, that we've been talking about for years and years and years. Uh, and of course, the last thing um, is the way a a Open uh, approaches this vertical is just, you know, we, we strive to make the most uh, reliable bit, uh, um, commercial media players, compute, edge computing devices out there to support these business critical applications, right? You don't want to be fixing your kiosk, your menu boards can't be down, unacceptable, right? So that about wraps it up today. I, I hope you found this um, this webinar interesting. Uh, and so uh, let me kick it back over uh, to Chris to wrap things up and we'll talk about a few questions. Um, yeah, with that being said, it looks like we are out of time here. So I wanted to, uh, first of all, uh, thanks everybody for participating and showing up to today's webinar. And I'd like to thank uh, Gary Kurtz again of Howard Company uh, for joining us um, and just also remind everybody that uh, in the next couple of days, we'll send this video out along with um, the uh, presentation. So please make sure you feel free to share it with any partners and or customers that you may have. Um, and also if you have any questions, our contact information is up here on the screen. We're more than happy to uh, jump in a call um, on either side, uh, product demos, any, anything you're really um, looking for. So uh, keep an eye out for those. And once again, thanks everyone for joining and have yourselves a great day.